Hi, this is Jim Sevier, and we're talking right now about shortest path bridging, and we're talking about simplification opportunities. And I'm going to be addressing a number of door openers that I believe that you can use to gain access to decision makers within IT. Uh, let's let's go kind of kind of go through again some of the things that that matter the most to to simplification-based projects, where we were talking about them being edge provisioned and scripted deployments and the elimination of spanning tree and and natively doing east and west computing well let's turn those into into real time uh, elements that you can and engaging elements that you can bring to to these potential opportunities the first has to do with delay associated with service delivery when you provision a network and you have to provision the network across the core traditional legacy routing technologies require that you do a shutdown of the network core when you add a major element to the network. And that usually requires, on average, about 30 days of advance notice. So whenever a, an IT department wants to deploy a network in a very complex legacy, traditional you know, legacy routing environment, they usually have to go about 30 days before they can actually deploy the service. Even though the service is ready to be deployed, even though the business needs the service today, they have to be 30 days in advance of everything because it's going to take them 30 days to schedule the downtime in the data center, in the core. Well, with edge provisioning, what that means is, is that you've taken basically 30 days down to two days. And, it, and that's basically the time it takes to install the shortest path bridging uh, elements within the network. So you're basically saving the network or you're saving that business 28 days where they can actually be using the service more immediately than they could with traditional routing technology. So edge provisioning gives us this opportunity to create a fairly unique scenario where we're, op we're offering something very differentiated. We're giving them back time, time to actually use and implement services that they need to grow their business and respond to change. Those are pretty significant. The next piece of this is that um, I want to talk about is on this simplification piece is the use of, of non-technical personnel. Oh, well, now every every certified networking engineer and architect, all these all these folks come at a considerable cost per year to an, to an IT organization. And IT organizations over the past you know five ten years have been reducing their costs and ultimately having to, to minimize the amount of very technical resources that they've got inside of their, inside of their employment. Now, what that means is, is that these resources have to be sent out to go out to deploy these routers and, and very complex routing protocols throughout the network. They've got to be involved and engaged with that, or you've got to, to get somebody locally and hire you know, contractors to come in and do that work for you. Well, now there's an alternative to that solution. And that is with scripted deployments. One of the things that, that Shores Path Bridging has is the ability to write scripted command line interface. So you can actually uh, pre-write a script to deploy a switch within an environment. And you can simply deliver the switch out to location, plug it in, connect it to the internet, and then run a simple command line. And, and it will provision that switch associated to the service that you're adding. So that's a pretty significant, again, differentiation that you're bringing to the marketplace by simplifying the network. Simplifying it not only in the standpoint of, of the architecture, but simplifying it in the deployment piece. And that's an area that hasn't had the opportunity to become more efficient. And that's nice within IT because now you're finding new ways to save an IT department a significant amount of revenue as they deploy services and deploy applications throughout their geography, if it's multi national, multi-state, um, that's, a, that's a key element. So scripted resources and using uh, very non-technical uh, resources in order to deploy the equipment is a significant advantage for shortest path bridging. Now, let's address the next, the next element. One of the other elements we talked about had to do with uh, eliminating spanning tree. And so, Again, without getting too technical, um, sh uh, shortest path bridging is a, is a virtual routing environment, meaning every, every port in this environment knows about every other port. And when you have a network that is completely knowledgeable about what everything is that's going on, 
you have the ability to keep more ports active. So uh, in traditional legacy routing protocols uh, or uh, routing net, routed networks, spanning tree protocol is used to, to keep the network from creating a loop on itself. And when you get a loop in a network, it significantly slows and can actually bring a network to its knees. But what you see normally is just a, a very slow responding network when you have network loops. Spanning tree kicks in, it tries to eliminate all that, but it's a very complex protocol and it takes a significant amount of time to build that protocol's tables in a very complex environment. So when you simplify the network and you go with shortest path bridging, so instead of spanning tree, you use shortest path bridging, what you get is you get an immediate routed layer two, layer three virtual switching fabric that is anti-looping. There's just no way you can get and make it loop. Now, what's interesting about that is, is that in order for spanning tree to get its job done, um, it basically has to shut down one of the ports. So let's say we have a, a you know, two, two routers sitting here in the network and you've got two separate ports and then you've got two more routers and each one of these are connected to, to that, to those routers, right? So now you've got a basically a huge network loop, but you do this so that you can create some resilience. So in any event that any one router were to fail, you'd want to make sure that the network would keep up and running. Well, spanning tree protocol, you would, you would have spanning tree protocol and it would basically shut down, eliminate these links and put them in standby mode so that all of these devices have the ability to run in a line rather than, so you have this router coming through this router, you can come back through that router, um, and, or you can come down to this router. So everything ends in a straight line. Again, this is nice, but you've just eliminated each one of these ports that you've now initiated as inactive. These ports you cannot use. So now what I've effectively done now is, is that I've eliminated one, two, three, four, five, six ports and have left one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, and left six ports. So, so now I've basically taken half the network down and I'm not using half of the ports available to me in this network. So you fast forward to a shortest path bridge network and you take those four routers and you connect them all. Router one, two, three, and four. And you basically connect them via a mesh network. Basically all these ports are individually active on all devices. So what you get is you're actually getting your money's worth out of all active or at all active network infrastructure where any one of these ports at any given time can be used in delivering the network without creating a loop. Now that's pretty significant. There's a value add there of showing how they can increase throughput and bandwidth by an order of magnitude of half as much again. So 100% more bandwidth and throughput with a, with, a, with a shortest path bridging network than you can in a traditional legacy routed network. That is significant. That is money back. That is being able to utilize ports you've already paid for but aren't using because spanning tree doesn't want you to create a loop and traditional ethernet technologies don't want you to, to create a loop. So that is a big, big differentiation to bring up when you're talking to opportunities about shortest path bridging. Now let's go, let's move on to the next element. The next element in network simplification had to do with reducing human error. And, and we talked about this edge provisioning piece earlier when we were talking about the, the, the delay associated with having to reach the core. Well, about 30% of the time, an outage is related, a network outage is related to human error. So when you eliminate the complexity of programming virtual LANs and these, all these traditional legacy routing protocols, these bloated protocols, once you start eliminating the need to do that, what you start doing is you start reducing the amount of outage associated to human error. 30% of the time, if the network goes down, you can pretty much scale it, run it right back to some operator somewhere that either fat fingered some command or just didn't understand the complexity of the design. So, so that, that edged provisioning piece also helps out when you're looking at minimizing the effect of human error on the network. 
All right, so let's get down to the last element here. And, and by the way, I don't know what the cost of, of the network being up all the time is to a business, but pretty much any business today, it's a significant cost. Some businesses more than others, especially if you're in the financial services industry, that outage caused by a human could mean a significant decrease in your income on that particular, in that particular day. So, so that could be something very significant in an industry. It may not be as significant, but every time the network goes down, trust me, usually the, the leader of the organization, president of the organization is very aware of it. Uh, the last piece that I mentioned as well has to do with that whole east-west computing thing, and that really has to do with being able to, to uh, deploy um, what they call virtualized switching or virtual, excuse me, virtualized uh, services within a network. So what that means is, is that you've got basic instances and applications running on multiple types of servers and duplicated throughout the, the data center. And instead of one server being dedicated to a specific application, now I can have multiple applications running, you know, six, seven, one, two, three. I can have multiple applications running on multiple servers and each of these servers communicate through their own operating system and make more effective use of CPU and uh, compute cycles. So compute cycles being millions of instructions per second. So, so having the ability to take advantage of these virtualized services, and again, virtualized services have been around for a few years now, but really the, the complexity associated, again, with those traditional routing protocols makes it very difficult for data center um, engineers and IT professionals to configure this to its highest and most efficient means possible. So when you have native virtualized um, support for, for virtualized initiatives inside of a data center and it's native to the, the protocol that you're, that you're delivering, you're going to have a significant thing to say to that IT department. So, so let's recap. Well, we talked about eliminating the delays in service. So you're giving back at least 28 days to an organization by, by showing them how to utilize shortest path bridging within their networking infrastructure. You're showing them how to use a, a less expensive resource to deploy uh, switches and, and networking components out in the field because, again, a scripted command line interface, and that's all that's necessary in order to get these boxes running. Um, you can eliminate um, spanning tree protocol and you can actually uh, improve the amount of time that it takes for the network to come back to life, right? And you can reduce the amount of human error that, that network outages are caused by, and you can, re you can make the network more native to these virtualized applications and getting more bang for the buck for all of these virtualized services that they put into the data center. So you're saving them time, you're saving them money, you're, you're letting them utilize more effective resources, and you're, you're making the network more resilient simply by making the network simpler with shortest path bridging. Again, one protocol. So with that, I will say thank you. This is Jim Sevier, and look forward to talking to you again on another video.